What's up? We are again live because I missed you. I love you so much. I'm totally kidding. Not really, but kind of. But anywho, I hope you're having a great night. Tonight, we're going over something super, super stupendously important. We're going over how to write a round two dispute or a follow up to your previous dispute because so many people are getting it wrong. Now, because we're live, I do have to change some of my settings here, such as turning off my chat because um, because it is what it is, all right? So give me two seconds. I'm going to go fix that, and we are going to get to it. Now, while I'm doing that, very first thing that I want for you to do for me is to smash that like, right? Smash that like and let me know that I am awesome because I try to be, all right? So um, we are going over this because um, I was going through my comments tonight, and there were quite a few on how to write your follow-up dispute. A lot of people don't know how to do this and it is causing some problems, right? And we don't want that to happen. So um, we are almost done with this. I just have to paste something and we will be good to go. Now, this is going to be for you if you have no idea what to say in your dispute or whether you should be sending out a uh, validation of debt or a method of verification request or how to deal with violations and all of that awesome stuff. Now, just so you know, your method of verification request is actually not a dispute by itself. It is actually a sentence that goes directly into your dispute letter, right? So we're not sending a method of verification request. Like, what was the actual method of verification? No, 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 You already know with a factual based dispute, everything is totally simple, simplified, straight to the point, right? So we're just adding in a, hey, how did you verify this type of deal, all right? Now, we are done with this, so I'm going to go back to my stream, and we are going to get to it, okay? So if you haven't done so yet, like I said, smash that like because you like me, all right? And it also tells Google that you like it, and they're going to show other people, okay? So another thing is if you have no idea what to do and you don't want to do it and you want to see if I can do this for you, then head over to the link that you see on your screen my740.com. You can either send me a message there or you can schedule a call with me and I will see if I can do this for you. All right. So we are going to get to it. You don't need anything to write. You don't need to do anything other than pay attention. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen and we are going to do this together. So let me just add this to the stream and we're going to go over to how to write a, a round two dispute. Okay. So let's do this. So um, now if you don't know how YouTube works, there's an actual um, keyword search right on the channel. Let me see if I can pull this up and show you. Um, let's do it this way. So if we go to my channel, we're going to go over to this box over here and you're going to see a little magnifying glass. I don't know if you could see this correctly on your screen, but it's right here. I can type in any search that I want to, and this is where you're going to enter in what I'm going to show you right now. So you can find more information on this specifically what we're going to go over tonight by searching date last active and re-aged on my channel, okay? You can find anything like that on my channel. So when we are writing our round two dispute or when we're writing a follow-up dispute, we're not just using evolution line method in the dispute funnel and setting the follow-up and blah, blah, blah. We're answering very specific questions for our dispute, okay? So we're gonna go over some of these questions that you need to start thinking about when you are writing this because it is super, 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 super important, okay? so. Let's go over these questions. Did your dispute come back as verified? Was there any response at all? Was there a reason given for the verification? Did you receive any documentation or response from the creditor or the collector? Now let's pause right there. Over the last two years or so, however long ago COVID started and whatnot, the bureaus have been kind of ignoring everybody, right? And this goes for whether you own a business or whether you are a consumer doing, you know, your own disputes. So it's highly likely that you are not going to receive any response from the bureaus or creditors or collectors. If you just look at 
the number, the quantity of disputes that they used to get versus what they are currently getting, plus the increased cost of postage, the math works out so that you just get totally ignored, okay? They used to get like 150,000 per month per bureau, now they're getting like 1.5 million, and obviously postage went up to like 60 cents, so what was $765,000 in postage to respond to 1.5 million letters in one month is now 900,000, okay? So if you're wondering why you're not receiving any sort of response from them or very few responses, that's the reason. Another reason that you might get a um, stall tactic letter or a, um, you know, just a total rejection letter is because of the fact that they're getting 1.5 million disputes per month. Okay. So when they're telling you that they're no longer going to reinvestigate, when they don't understand the nature of your dispute and all that, these are just things that you can just send right to the trash and go on to your next letter, all right? If you wanna know more about that, all you have to do is go back to my channel and type in verified as accurate to check out the verified as accurate workshop, all right? So let's get back to this. What is the main reason for your dispute? What were the changes made between credit report one and credit report two or three and four or five and six, whatever it is. Okay. And this is extremely, extremely important because remember with factual disputes, we're taking the actual information directly from the credit report to craft our argument. Okay. Um, was the notice of dispute entered within 30 days? Super, super important. Super, 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 super important. The number one key to a factual based credit sweep. Okay. Um, did the date last reported change? That's another important one. Did the date of last activity change to reflect the date last reported? Now, what that means is when they verify as accurate, they're required to update the date last reported. However, you may see that they update the date of last activity to reflect that same date last reported, which means that they illegally re-aged it unless on that same exact date you submitted a payment or did some sort of activity on the account. And uh, it's highly likely that you did not. Okay. So that would be an illegal, uh, it, illegally re-aging an account and you can use this as a violation to remove it okay so i created a round two example letter and again this can be it, it doesn't have to be round two it can be any round other than the first letter that you sent and i hope that you can actually see uh the text on the screen there's no for, there's no way for me to make this any bigger at the moment okay so um this is Pretty straightforward at the top, we have our name, we have our address, we have our date of birth, and we have our social. Now, when you're writing the bureaus, always make sure that you are putting your full social, you're sending a copy of your ID, and a um, proof of address, like a utility bill, a bank statement, uh, you know, something like that, that is dated within the last 90 days, but most of the time I say 60 days, okay? You want to take away, if you remember, recently we did something on... Um, like take eliminating the ways that they can respond to you. And one of the ways that you can make sure that you are setting the follow-up is to make sure that you are doing these things on your checklist so that they can't come back and say, you know, it's verified or we don't understand or no, 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 Okay. Make sure you send your identification. It's super important. All right. So anywho, put today's date. I don't want to hear about backdating and all of that. Dude, it doesn't work. It's not going to work. Maybe it worked like years ago. It doesn't work now. Don't argue with me, okay? I get the results. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie, and mine prove that I know what I'm talking about, so don't even, okay? We're going to put the bureau and their address, such as you know, Experian and then PO box, blah, 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 4,500, um, obviously plus the city and state. Now, this is where we are going to go and answer those questions that we have on our checklist. And it's not specific to those questions. You can create your own questions, but this is just to get your, you know, your juices flowing with writing. Okay. So you're going to answer the most important questions from the checklist here. An example would be, I disputed these accounts on date, and that's going to be the date from your previous letter. And the notice of dispute was required to be entered by date plus 30, okay? And it is still missing. This is a violation of section 623 and requires deletion. Now you're going to notice I have two paragraphs and that's just because I have two separate things to say, okay? I also see that the date last reported and the date last active now reflect the same dates, which means that you've re-aged account one and account two. This is where you're going to put 
you know, whoever the creditor name and account number is, and then creditor name and account number. The date last reported should reflect when you verified the account, but the date last active should not have changed because no payment was made to these accounts. Delete for violation. And then uh, you can totally disregard the next line, or you can add it in. You can put, you know, um, disputed accounts, reinvestigate the following, like whatever you want or nothing at all. Remember, this is simple. It is straight to the point. So we don't want to put anything extra. However, I personally, uh, want to separate my sentence or my paragraph and my disputed accounts. That is why I do that. So reinvest the excuse me, reinvestigate the following accounts. Account number one, one, two, three, four, five, delete for violation. This account has been illegally re-aged from original date last active to current date last active. So I'm using the um, Ajero formula, right? A-J-E-R-O. It is action, justifier, element, reason, outcome. So I'm telling them what I am disputing, why I'm disputing it, and what I want for that, you know, to happen. Plus I'm putting in the facts. Okay. And all of that is included right there. Account number two, number five, six, seven, eight, nine, same reason. And then account number three, you know, number of three, three, four, four, five, six, or five, five, six, delete for violation of section 623, failure to enter required notice of dispute. Now, all done right there. Normally, I tell you, don't add in these laws and, you know, don't make it law heavy and, you know, whatever, right? But because this is a violation and it is specific to a law, I am adding it in here because it's an actual violation. I'm not just bullshitting, okay? So um, send me a new report reflecting these changes and then name. As you can see, it's very, very, very targeted to the reason that I'm writing this letter. And I'm taking this information directly from the credit report. And that's all we're doing, okay? There's no misunderstanding why I'm writing this letter. So when I was going through my comments earlier, someone had said, um, you know, how do I write my letter so that the bureaus understand what it is that I want to do or what it is that I'm trying to do. And this is exactly how you do it. You tell them why you're writing the letter. And that's why we have these questions to answer what you are disputing and what you want them to do. Don't automatically assume that the computer is going to understand what it is that you want for them to do. Okay. You have to tell them, you have to tell them, don't leave it up to chance. Okay. Because when the computer is reading your letter, it's going to convert um, the entire dispute into a two to three digit code. Obviously, it's going to go through EOSCAR and it's going to go over. So you want this to be 100% understood. If they don't understand the nature of your dispute, you're going to get a rejection letter and I don't want that to happen. Okay. Now, another thing that is important, and this is actually from a different video, but you need to break down your action plan, what it is that you are attempting to do with your credit report. And you need to understand where you currently are and where you want to go with not just your scores, but every single account and your credit report as a whole, right? So in this example, we do a, a credit report analysis, and this might be a little bit too small for you to see. So hopefully you can see it um, without going back to my stream. I can't see what it looks like um, on the screen that you see. But uh, in this example, we have a medical collection. It's unknown. We have a medical collection um, for 50 bucks. We have a key jewelers account for $100, a credit acceptance repo for $16,000, an apartment eviction under public records for $3,000, and one late payment on American Express closed account zero dollars. Okay. So now we then go and we have our goals. Okay. So yes, there's a lot that goes into this, right? There's a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton that goes into this. But when you understand what it is that you're looking for on the report, you're going to be able to write any letter on any round for any account. And that is why we're going over this. So now we go over our goals, remove the eviction, the repo, the charge off in less than nine months, remove late payments in less than six months, remove collections in less than four months and uh, raise credit scores 140 plus points in less than 12 months. And I say that that is very, very, very realistic. If you know me, if you've been following me for the eight years that I've been doing this here on YouTube, you know that 
everything that I do is documented to show that there are no shortcuts, okay? So now we need to create an action plan. We need to separate what's the most hurtful, our mid accounts, and then our least accounts, and then create a goal for our credit scores. Now, we already went over the specific goal score that we want, but what uh, we're talking about with an action plan and kind of separating everything is taking those same accounts that we just went over, the ones that are in the green, and we're going to separate them into most hurtful, mid, and least. So most hurtful is going to be K jewelers charge off, apartment eviction, and credit acceptance repo. Mid would be the late payments on American Express, and least would be medical accounts um, one and two. Now for our credit scores, we want to go from like very high 400s, uh, very low fives to mid sixes. Okay. Now, obviously we, we could say we want to go another hundred points up, but you have to be realistic with this. If within 12 months, you're trying to jump 300 points, honey, that's not really going to happen. Um, I mean, you first have to remove your negatives, flush out your credit, and then get the score that you want. If you were with me earlier today, when I went live, we were talking about realistic expectations and that is not realistic. Okay. So now we have to look at our account inaccuracies, and then we're going to create our letter plan, okay? So the account inaccuracies for medical, it's just unverifiable because it doesn't belong to me. An apartment eviction would be um, a zero balance on TransUnion, and then Equifax and Experian reporting 3,000. And credit acceptance repo high balance is lower than the balance, and the high balance is the highest balance that account has ever had. So obviously that doesn't make sense. And then K Jewelers, three different dates last active, two different years, medical collection, uh, validation of debt method, and then late payments on American Express, June 2020 on TransUnion, and then Experian, May 2020, and Equifax says on time. So now when we are creating our um, letter plan, let's go down a little bit lower, uh, that's going to be here in the pink. Okay, so please remove these inaccurate, uh, these inaccurate accounts from my credit report. Send me a new credit report reflecting these changes. That's the very simple sentence. Remember, you don't have to create this huge letter that goes into all these details, okay? So if this is letter one, that's all we're asking for is an investigation, okay? So K Jewelers account number one, two, three, four, five. Delete this account because three different dates last active, date, date, date. Credit acceptance, one, two, three, four, five. Delete that account because the high balance is lower than the balance. Apartment eviction, D12345. Delete for inaccuracy because the balance is zero on TransUnion and Equifax and Experian report 3,000. As you can see, I'm taking these um, inaccuracies that I just documented and went over with you, and I'm putting them down into the actual letter itself, right? And then I'm just going to copy this and put this on Word or Notepad, and then I'm going to print it and send it out, obviously, right? Um, using that same structure where we put our personal information at the top, the date, and the recipient, okay? Um, American Express, one, two, three, four, five, remove this late payment for inaccuracy because TransUnion reports June 2020 late, Experian reports May 2020 late, and Equifax reports accurately that I paid on time. No, even if that is not accurate, I'm going to tell them that it is accurate, okay? Now, medical collection 12345, this account is unknown. It needs to be deleted from my credit report. And medical collection 12345B, I don't know what this is. Delete this unverifiable account. Thank you. That's it. So as you can see, there are multiple steps for, you know, taking your credit report, breaking it down, understanding it, extracting those inaccuracies, and then putting them into an actual dispute letter. Okay. So I hope this made sense on how to write a either round two dispute or a follow up to a previous dispute letter. Now, if you need help creating your disputes, um, I actually just came out with a live letter, which is an automation app that I created as a tool on uh, Google Sheets. And I came out with uh, version 2.7 today, which had a bunch of different um you know, upgrades to it because I'm always adding to it. And I'm going to show you those um, upgrades that I made today. But if you want to access this, let me just give you the link real quick. Let's go back here and we're going to uh, change this to be this. Okay. So if you want to check out Live Letter, you can go to liveletter.ask dash kristen.com. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen again and we're going to go back to that site. But um, live letter is really awesome because 
not only is it on Google Sheets and everybody knows how to use Google Sheets, but um, it comes with all the dispute reasons that you need built into it. Uh, there's a personal version, just if you're trying to fix your own credit report, and there is a commercial version if you want to fix, you know, clients or multiple family members, you know, more than one person. Okay. So I can actually show you that it's possible to create an entire dispute letter in just a few seconds, even if you've sent some before that were, you know, verified because it does everything for you. Okay. Then it breaks down everything that it has one click, regular automation one click quick automate 290 built-in factual dispute reasons 80 built-in real person dispute letters you can create a full letter in five seconds and um, ability to connect to 4,000 other apps in the API and you can 100% customize it because it's Google Sheets like you can use the Google Apps um, app script right um, so just so you know, I only charge a one-time payment for this. It's totally customizable. I give you one-to-one -one support if you need it. And, you know, it, it takes me 10 seconds to create a dispute letter, which means that the other 13 minutes and like 50 seconds that other people take to create other dispute letters, you know, I'm spending on fixing other clients credit reports or, you know, doing other things that I need to. So if you're trying to increase your ROI, if you're a business, or you're trying to increase your credit scores or, you know, your ability to remove accounts, then this is probably going to be um, something that can, you know, be added to your arsenal. Okay. So I'm going to actually go and just show this to you really quick, the differences, um, the things that I added in today, and I need to move this because it is in my way. So it's really simple. We have a CRM, we also have our letters. Uh, this is where you actually create your letter. We have where we create our actual accounts. And let me just scroll down. Um, this is where we have our automate, our quick automate. And it actually chooses a dispute reason for you based on the type of round. Uh, this is where you print your letter. And we added in a dispute log task log and violation log today. So um, the dispute log is very, very simple. You're going to choose a client from your dropdown. And um, this is actually going to be created automatically for you. You don't have to do anything. And it's just putting all of your clients that you have here on your uh, in your CRM into a dropdown list. All right. And it's going to do the same thing for the dispute log, the task and the violation log. So we're going to choose a client. And um, you know what? We're going to choose Jane Dole. Okay. Actually, let's choose Bob the Builder just because Bob the Builder is cool. So Bob the Builder, um, our dispute details, dispute was sent out for um, Bob the Builder. So instead of first and last name, we're going to choose Bob the Builder on here. So for Bob, Bob the Builder on 8-16-2022 with a due date of 9 uh, where to go? 9 16 2022. This view can be found at, and then you can put a drive link or wherever you are digitally storing this. And then it's going to put everything together. Um, I'm going to join the text for everything in the summary. Um, we have a due date, so we actually know when it's going to be due next. The change, uh, the color will change based on whether it is past due or it's coming up. Um, we can choose whether it is open, on hold, urgent, completed. And then we also have uh, a recipient. So we can choose bureaus only, creditors, collectors, bureaus and collectors, bureaus and creditors, bureaus, creditors and collectors, or creditors and collectors. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, the task log that I added is also very, very simple. You choose a client, again, from the same drop down that it creates for you, your task details, when it is due, whether it is past due, coming up, whatever. And um, it also has a status bar that you can choose. And then the third thing is the violation log. Now, the reason that we have a violation log is very, very simple. We're building a paper trail that we're going to use against the bureaus in the case that we have to go to the CFPB. So this is very, 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 very important, all right? So we have our violation details, the summary, and the status, okay? And I would also recommend that you um, keep track here of all the disputes that you sent out, responses that you received, you know, all those different things that, you know, you want to track with your violation. But those are the three things that were added today. And um, otherwise, this thing literally does everything for you except for barbecue. So we have um, this tool on Google Sheets. And we also have the actual credit repair software that I created, um, the, credit, uh, the credit suite, which literally 
It's it's a full dispute app. Um, if you want to check out that, you can do that here. And we're going to add that link. Um, Linkshort.com forward slash buy dash suite. Okay. So anyways, I guess that is it today. We went over how to write a follow-up dispute or a round two dispute, whichever letter um, that you are on. And um, if you want me to go over any specific things to explain, or you have questions that you want in a live Q and A, go to any of my other videos, my actual videos, because this is live. And I want for you to post a comment, go right now to any of my other videos and post a comment, letting me know what you are currently personally struggling with, whether that is follow-ups or violations or what to do if this happens or how to remove that or whatever. And, um, I might actually, you know, include it in one of these. Okay. Um, and then again, lastly, if you want to see if I can do a credit suite for you and you want to get the highest credit score and you want it to be the fastest possible, then head over to my 740.com schedule, call me and I will see if I can help. But for tonight, that is it. I am going to get back to my files. I am working a little bit late tonight and I will see you tomorrow. So that's it. Bye.